233, serial number 231, November 36 Tango Hotel. We just pulled the airplane out of the hangar. It's been in uh, storage for a few months, so uh, I'm going to pull all the panels out of it and start it up in this tape. Taxi it around a little bit, may or may not fly it. But we're here at a uh, Fort Wayne International Airport, Fort Wayne, Indiana, on a beautiful May day. Just showing the pictures, a general description of the airplane, front to back. It's in an authentic Thunderbird color from the original Thunderbirds in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. This was a Canadair built as serial number 231. Of 650 airplanes built, this was the 231st airplane. It's probably the lowest time T-33 in the world. It's got 2760 total airframe hours. Very reliable, non-damaged airplane, non modified in any way. It's totally Canadian original except for a radio or two. Very nice airplane. I'm glad to see it's going to a great owner. I'll walk the uh, exterior of the airplane front to back, open the canopy and show the front cockpit, the rear cockpit, and work from the port side over to the center panel and to the right, right and then in the back to give uh, you John a, John a good idea of this airplane. Okay, walking up to the uh, canopy opener, and you got a small door here on the side on all T-33s. Pop this panel, hit the opening switch, and the canopy will go all the way open. That's in that little panel there for opening and closing externally. Now I'm going to open that ammo bay door to give you an idea what the baggage size is. Hold one. The bay door is open and you can see a, a very large access for two to three suitcases, golf clubs or whatever. Three new battery system. You got one external here, two hidden behind that panel, and the remote radio package. We've got a little light up in the cockpit here. The switch over here, I'll turn it on. And just general access to the Ammo Bay area. Really from a pre-flight standpoint in this area the main thing is make sure this door gets shut and you have your brake accumulator reservoir right here. Make sure that's full at all times when you're uh, going out to fly. Panning from front to back on the uh, port side here looking down around the airplane tip tanks I'm going to put that ladder up on the uh, side. Hold. That's a knockdown two-piece ladder I made to tong in this airplane in that ammo bay, ammo bay. So it's nice to have that ladder for accessing the cockpits while you're getting pre-flighted and ready. Last thing you do before flight is disassemble it, stick it in the ammo bay, close it up, and uh, you're all set. Okay, going up into the front cockpit at this time. This is looking from the right side down into the left side of the cockpit. You'll see your fuel selector area with your main fuel slash pump, your takeoff and uh, isolation pump there that goes on for the first takeoff of the day or anytime there's an emergency. Normally it's left in the down uh, normal position. Next to it, the new red switch there is your soft start battery system. It's a nice new system for soft starting the airplane. Uh, and just going across. Uh, landing lights there, throttle, mic switch on top, hold. Main fuel cock, I see it's left on, so there's a that should be full back right now. I'll pull that back here in a second. Right there, that red handle with the white knob on it is your aileron boost. And above it, your main fuel shutoff, and that knob there controls your air conditioning and heat system, an eyeball air vent, and a storage uh, plug for your uh, oxygen system when you're not using it. Down below to the, oh, let's see, right there is your oxygen regulator with standard hookups. Over to the quarter is your radio package, transponder, COM1. COM2, NAV1, NAV2, turn and bank, 
DME, airspeed indicator, a full custom caution panel, hold, caution panel including a green electric trim, and of course on the end of the stick there is left right aileron, forward and aft uh, elevator. Next to it is your, right there, is your relight. Jettison uh, covered switch behind it is in app. You don't use a jettison anymore. And then your audio panel. COM1, COM2 selector switch, marker beacons, uh, flap extension 45, 174, 22 degrees, 200 knots, and initial flaps 11 degrees, 235. Coming down to HSI and nose and left and right landing gear indicators. Gear unsafe light, RMI selector 1 and 2 ADF, and above it the RMI indicator where we're talking about putting in the uh, Argus 5000 colored moving map that would connect with the North Star GPS right there. ADF is there, the head, uh, standard Imperial fuel counter next to it is the is the light on for uh, any fuel venting out of your saber drain in the back. Left, down below, we have the flap indicator gauge, the oxygen uh, gauge and the gauge and the, the bubble, they're just not turned on, and the, and the blinker gauge eyeball uh, when you're using your oxygen system. Down below right there is called a foot warmer for pressurizing the airplane and heating and cooling. And down there is your depress valve. It's always left up except in an emergency or to vent. Okay, hold. getting back to the T-Bird, coming in from the uh, port side quartering front. I'll get back up into the cockpit. T-Bird, or the uh, F-100 is taxing back for runway 23. It's a 12,000 foot back up on the port wing, looking at the T-33 from on top of the wing, front to back. and moving up into the cockpit from the left side. Okay, we're back from the left side looking at the caution panel, moving across, push to test buttons, vertical speed, clock, below it is your RPM gauge hiding behind the canopy lock lever your ITT gauge, oil pressure gauge down below in the corner, inside cabin pressure altimeter, digital adapter on clock, that's an outside air temperature gauge right there, inside air temperature gauge and voltage regulator digital gauge and that one right there is your adapter on clock system. Up on top and very nice to have, very important in this airplane is a complete shade and fuel flow which is really nice. This tells you your battery's working and putting a load on it and of course uh, on top of the shade and fuel flow you have your digital counter which is hiding behind the stick right there and that's in imperial gallons from uh, 0 to 820 U.S. gallons on board. Right there is your canopy opening and closing manual. Coming up to the right quartering, you got a Velcro pad, a strobe switch, an avionics master switch, your circuit breakers for, and there's your shade and fuel flow system, your RPM gauge, audio panel, uh, glide slope, marker beacon, DME, and um, other indicators, emergency attitude indicator, NAV, NAV1, COM2, COM1, circuit breaker system. Okay, and then right behind.